Scotland do live at five on Halloween, although Paul and I oh my are God, dressed that, appropriately. Yeah. We're so boring. So We're boring. Dread, dreadfully boring. We are so boring. We, we should have at least dressed as each other. Yeah, that would have been. I could have done the hair. And anyway, we didn't <laughs> do that today. So sorry. Um, but we've got Lucas Stu here from Natasha Pierre and from Natasha Pierre, Pierre and the Great Comedy eighteen twelve. Uh, he's awesome, and I saw it off Broadway. I'm excited to see it on Broadway. Yeah, I saw it off Broadway too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, did you have a cocktail? I might have done. Yeah, may have done that. I might have it's done. It's a whole thing. It's a, it's a whole, whole experience. Thing. Do I get to have a cocktail on Broadway? I hope so. I hope so. I well, we will yet. find out that and more. And more. All right. Sad news to begin with. Sorry, everybody. Our favorite production, The Color Purple, is going to be closing on January the eighth, two thousand seventeen. We were sort of half expecting it. Yeah. Um, but still, it'll be sad to see it go. However, it is going on national tour. So I can't wait to see what's next for Cynthia Erivo. I know. It's going to be really it's fun be really interesting to see. Oh. Really interesting. Um, the Liaison opened last night. The I Liaison. Buzz now, buzz now. And uh, the Red Carpet Challenge, I think, will be up in a bit. Yes, yeah, so a new Matt wrote in uh, Red Carpet Challenge. He doesn't speak French, but he tried to. Oh. And it's fun. I All just right. I just saw it. It's fun. It's you'll, fun. you'll see it in about an hour. Um, and Paul Alexander Nolan, Nolan begins performances tonight in Chicago as Billy Flynn. Yep. The leg right the next, next door. door. Okay. Danny Rattigilano will assume the role of Danny in Holiday Inn on Broadway from November the 1st, replacing Lee Wilcoff. That's just come in. So. Oh, okay. Oh. I didn't notice that. Late, late I'm century. behind on the news. That only closes in January. Um, right. Right. Uh, uh, one, one Caitlin Gallup who's behind yeah, the camera. Caitlin Gallup. She, got, she talked to Bette Midler and got exclusive quotes. I mean, she went to the Hula yeah. Hula. What's it called? Hula Ween. Hula Ween. Hula Ween. She went to Bette Midler's yeah. annual party and she talked to Bette Midler. Yeah. About so her dolly. We've got like an exclusive interview on the site. So thanks, Caitlin. So thanks, Caitlin. Thanks for that. You should be checking that one out, everybody. Um, okay, Gross says bit of a bit of a downer this week in the Grosses, apart from Hamilton. Oh, yeah. And the shows were fine, but, you know, a lot of them were down from last week, whatever. Obviously, people don't go out on Halloween or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure whatever. they'll be back up. I'm sure they will. The holidays are holidays starting. Are coming. So the holiday time is huge. I'm Absolutely. Um, Heather Headley, Sutton Foster, Santino Fontana, and more uh, will be in Lincoln Center's American Songbook series That's next exciting. year. That's yeah, exciting. Yeah, I'm excited exciting. for that. Uh, fan odds and ends today. Uh, Kristen Chenoweth um, did an homage to Judy Garland on the view today. A drag. Judy Garland drag. Yeah, it was cool. Um, April Fogard's Master Harold will extend off Broadway. So oh. that sounds by a week. This was fun. You found this story. Tina Madigan. Oh, yeah, I found that Facebook. Yeah. Facebook stories. Facebook stories. Tina, Tina Madigan, who of course originated the role of Sophie, is that her name? Yeah, yeah Sophie in Mamma Mia, is now playing Donna. In Mamma Mia, where is that? In uh, Newfoundland? In Newfoundland. Next well, summer. Where, where she's from. Yeah. So she's going back home to do it. Yeah, and she's great. She's a mom now. And so, you know, this is what happens 16, 17 years, 17 years later. I think it's You can become the mom. You can become the mom. Okay, culturalist, best Halloween costumes. Oh, what one? No, this is interesting. So number one was Jenna from Waitress. Two was Grizabella. Three was Seely. Okay. Four was Dewey Finn from School of Rock. And five was Evan from Dear Evan Hansen. Oh, okay. That that's what I would have been if I was yeah. going to do a. I was going to be that. I was going to do the sling and then the striped shirt. I think I'd have cut just, my face off. Like I think I'd have just gone after Neil Simon and see if I could pull a string. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd probably have been Grizabella. You should have been Grizabella. You know what? Maybe we'll just do it tomorrow. Just do it tomorrow. <laughs> it's fine. Well, not when you're expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> um, now Halloween hot shots up, including of course Neil Patrick Harris. An annual a tradition. Annual epic. The, this one they, looks like they shot at the New Amsterdam. Yeah. It yeah, in the, in the orchestra, the Amsterdam. They're all Hollywood icons. The family, it's it's great. Um, and, and they are doing it in a Broadway theatre because hey, it's over Neil Patrick Harris Burt because I don't know where. No. It is. Okay, day in the life, Courtney Reed. That's going to be up soon, I think. Mm. That video, maybe. Mm. All right. Sometime in the next However, twenty-four hours. However, my one-on-one with Simon McBurney, who of course did the encounter, is going to be up, and he talks about being creature in Harry Potter. Did she do it in the jungle or something? Wrestling with. Where um, did you film that interview? Um, you know, and we, we, because it's all about him going to the Amazon, the encounter, uh-huh. and there is um, a plant room upstairs because all the plants in the office There was an issue, and all the plants were in one room. <laughs> so Imogen was like, well, just do it in no, here. No, well, it wasn't me, it was Jim. Jim, Jim it. Yeah, Jim, the, the director, it. thought of it, and he said, and let's just film it in here, in the jungle. There and were a lot of flies. So you did. You sat a lot sat of oxygen in that room. A lot of oxygen and a lot of flies as we did the one-on-one. But it, it played about well, I think. And he... Simon, to be fair to him, played along and loved the whole thing. Okay. And, you know, he's, he's done big movies and that new Brad Pitt movie coming out and stuff. He's, you know, he, he could have had an ego, but he was fine. Right. 
for that again. Thank you, Emerson. Bye. Let's get Lucas Steele over here. Come on over, Lucas, with your awesome hair. What's up? Uh, how are you? How are you doing? Good. Good. Your hair is so good. Thank what What's you. that color called? Just. I don't know. There's some silver in here, some blonde. Yeah, I see the silver. I see the silver. About three processes. Oh, really? It's the whole thing. Yeah. How you doing? How is Natasha? Pierre and the Great. I love that. It's a it's a cumbersome title. It's a long title. Sort of like How to Succeed. But this is War and Peace, the musical. And the book War and Peace is like, I never read it. Have you read it? I, I'm actually three quarters of the way through it. Oh, really? Can imagine yeah. this is like four years that I've What's your goal? It? Like, by the time it was on Broadway, <laughs> yes. I will read it. <laughs> to finish it. Yeah. Um, this yeah, is, though, a 70 page slice. So okay. don't be uh, cumbersome of the idea that, right. oh, God, it's the whole yeah. 2,000 pages. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is an amazing show. I got to see it when it was, I saw it when it was in the Meatpacking District. Mm -hmm. Right? How yeah. long have you been with it? I've been with it since. A workshop that happened at wow. Ars Nova before Super the production early. at Ars Nova. Right. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So you've been, this has been a part of your yes. life for it's years. Yes. Yeah. So, so how does it feel that like you're, what, well, you started on Broadway, what, a week ago or so? Mm -hmm. You started previews? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. So now you're finally, how does it, you know, when you do these things as an actor, yeah. you know, and even if people involved all say, we want to make it a Broadway show. Uh -huh. I don't even think this one, people really said that at first. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, because a, a lot of it was the environ, environmental element. When mm -hmm. I saw it downtown, and a lot of people thought, you can't really do that on Broadway. Yes. But it sounds like they've done some amazing things in the Imperial Theater. So what is the Imperial Theater like now? What, what, what's, what's going on over there? Yeah, I think anyone who comes in is sort of flabbergasted by what they've done to the inside of the theater. Wow. We can even tell when we walk out people's reactions and that's they've been sitting in there for 15 minutes before we even yeah. come out you can just sort of see on their faces what happened and what am i in for wow um our set designer she's you know a macarthur genius and she also studied architecture so she really okay. was very capable of going in and doing all the work that needed to happen structurally to this theater in order to make that happen wow because there's a lot of permits and a lot of City so stuff. are you still walking all over the place like you we did? Are. You, you're all over the place. Yeah, we are, are you, all over are you the able, place. And you're able to go from the stage to the mezzanine and the... Correct. There you're are, all over the place. Yeah, giant staircases that go up and connect wow. all of it. Are and they, I have to say it's actually brought... Because the, the book itself is so epic and the story uh -huh. is so epic, yeah. making it larger has actually served the piece in a wonderful way. Okay. Because it allows it to live on this level that it actually was written at. Uh -huh. So when... There's this section called the opera mm -hmm. that goes on, and it happens in the entire theater. So when the sequence is happening and Natasha talking about being at the opera and all these people looking at her, mm. or when Anatole sort of enters and the whole theater looks at him, it makes sense because you are in a theater. Right. And all the actors right. are right. out there in the aisles yeah. and they're gossiping with each other. Yeah, it's, and it's meta. like a film it's, set. It's going yeah. on all different levels. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. So you play, you just Anatole, he's like the hot guy. So right. you have nice, you have, I'll, here's what I remember. <laughs> you have great coats. I remember like great yeah. coats and like pretty amazing coats. Yeah, and you yeah. kind of um, you're like a, a little like love triangle trouble, right? Like you you come in and you like sweep. It's tell true. Me, tell, 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 talk about this guy. He's he's, he's a, enjoying life, isn't he? He is. He doesn't have many cares. That's for sure. He's a bit of a uh, unknowingly. Playboy ish. Of, yeah, 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 uh -huh. yeah. A little bit of a bad boy. Not, I wouldn't say he is the smartest guy in the world. Okay. But the thing that is on his side is that he doesn't care about anything. Right. So he just sort of goes after what he wants. Uh -huh. And he and his sister both have that, a very similar vibe there, and that they're very childish okay. in that way, so that it's just about uh, being gratified uh -huh. or getting whatever it is that they want to, to feel right. good. Is he a fun guy to play, to live in that world? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah? I mean, I, this, the entrance alone, uh, when will I ever get another entrance like this on Broadway? I mean, the feat that is being pulled off via all departments, from lighting to sound to stage management to, it's, it's pretty badass. Awesome. Yeah. Badass. It's a good yeah. quote for the front of the house. <laughs> uh, Julie saw you and talked to you Saturday after the night show. So that, that's, thank mm -hmm. you, Julie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, how are the how is Josh growing? How are the fans? How wh what's happening over there? Josh how is, is he? Josh is awesome. Yeah, yeah, a great, great guy. There is no ego whatsoever. There's no diva behavior whatsoever. He's totally open um, to listening, to learning. He wants to be the best that he can be, and uh, he's gonna surprise a lot of people. 
with the, the PR that he's giving you is really, really wonderful. Cool. Um, his fans, absolutely incredible, yeah. I have to say. They've supported each and every one of us since the beginning of this. And they stay and they talk to all of us after the show. Mm -hmm. Even if like we come out after he's gone. Right, they don't just leave after they meet him. Yeah, out. yeah. Right. They're remarkable. And they're blowing up social media. And it's really a lovely experience to be kind of welcomed yeah. to Broadway in this way. Yeah. With that fan base. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you were also in a Three Penny Opera, which someone just mentioned. Sure um, was. I remember that. That was a that was that crazy that crazy ass yeah. Scott Elliott production. Yeah, yeah. Um, with uh, Cindy Lauper and mm -hmm. Alan Cumming, mm -hmm. and I remember you were <laughs> outrageous in that. What, what did you look like? You played multiple roles. Yeah, I, I played a bunch of roles in the ensemble, and I understudied one of the principal roles. Um, that experience. Which principal role? I have to, uh, Lucy Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's what's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Normally, Lucy Brown doesn't look like that. Right, she's no. usually a woman. Right, there um, you go. And at that point in time, you know, they, I sort of had been doing a lot of counter tenor work, and I could sing very, very high, because they yeah. wanted that role sung by a male, but in the women's register. Right. Um, Brian Charles Rooney did it originally and did it wonderfully. Um, but that experience, I have to say, was to be involved in that though it wasn't the most well received right. thing that happened I do feel it was one of the most authentic experiences that has happened on Broadway mm. um, it has turned into you know a slightly a bit of a commercial machine and that yeah. makes sense because it's commercial theater yeah but I feel like that was the end of the wave of sort of being in, being able to do something super downtown yeah and in your face there's nothing safe about it nothing was safe about yeah. it and it, it people either loved it or they hated it right and watching the amount of people that actually left yeah. when I would come out after intermission, uh -huh. it was astounding. Wow. And even being booed. Who got booed? how much it was There's, compelling There were people. boos happening? Group numbers. Group numbers <laughs> that we were out there. <laughs> Never in my life have I experienced something like that. That people oh were so moved and like angered by the translation uh -huh. and what it was saying yeah. because it was very, very vile. Wallace Shawn, incredible writer, goes there. Goes to all these places yeah. that people just don't want to think about and words it in ways that uh -huh. are completely just vile and using the language in the strongest possible way. Right. It's the only time in my life I've ever felt what that feeling is. Wow. And I'm proud of it to this day. Clearly I'm sitting here talking no rot about it. No rotten so. fruit thrown, though. Yeah. Didn't you also <laughs> do didn't you also do a show at Broadway.com, Susan Blackwell? I sure did. A musical, a yeah. musical called The I Kid. I love, love Susan Blackwell. I loved that show, The Kid, with Chris Sieber. Yep. Wonderful guy. Yeah. I learned so much from Chris. I mean, talk about being a master of comedy. But he can do anything. I mean, his ability to sort of translate through different styles... Um, yeah. whether it's sort of serious or comedic or how he's singing or he, he's he's super organic yet completely heightened at the same time which is what I needed to sort of take and use in Anatole especially mm. in this production mm. because the language through which we uh, communicate this story uh -huh. is, is a a beast unto itself. Right. So when I have an audience member sitting this close to me, yeah. my face needs to be in a way that's sort of like a film TV situation uh -huh. going on. Yeah, my body needs to be large enough to sort of right. sweep uh -huh. to get the person that's sitting in the back of the mezzanine right. Right. to look and know yeah. what's going on. Yeah. And watching him in that experience, uh, like seeing him in Shrek, and then yeah. seeing him do that, yeah. and watching how in an intimate situation he could still get away with doing very heightened comedic things, I took a lot Thanks of Thanks, Chris Sieber. Look, Chris yes. Sieber I love out. you, buddy. Look so at that. Much. I just got to see him in the prom in ah, Atlanta, which is great. amazing. I can't wait to see this. People are going to flip out when they see yeah. that show. It's so good. Uh, Jason saw your fifth preview. You are awesome. Yeah. I predict a Tony nomination. Thanks, well, we're not Jason. talking Tony nomination. All right, all right. La. <laughs> la, 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 la. Thank you. Uh, Nay wants to know how do you keep your voice healthy, uh, mm -hmm. your voice with those crazy high notes every night. Yeah, uh, I don't talk much during the day actually. Yeah, I, I'm very careful about how much I speak. Texting more texting than talking. Yeah, it's tricky during previews. Previews are the hardest time because you're rehearsing for five hours during the day yeah. and often doing things over and over again for sound purposes. So they need you singing right. to know what's going on. Especially sound is such a, a tricky thing in our show as well right. because it's happening near you and needs to sound like it's near you. Ah, uh -huh. um, but I, I watch my talking. I have uh, this amazing 
gargle that I use from this voice teacher, Dr. Bill Riley, who... Thanks, Bill. Yeah. I mean, the list of his people is absolutely really? incredible. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I do that when I'm on two show days if I'm feeling dry because the weather changes and theaters are full of dust and mold and all of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and warm up and cool down. And, you know, fortunately, the larger thing that I sort of have to stay on top of is the physicality. Mm -hmm. of the production right just because the amount of stairs that we are doing yeah and then that must, that's gone up i'm sure because the venue's yes. bigger yeah so you're someone carried their phone around with them you know there's that app in there that records how many steps uh -huh. you take a day yeah and or this or this thing yeah or like yeah. a fitbit yeah yeah and uh, we were it's not very period by the way <laughs> it's not very period. <laughs> hide it under <laughs> um we were averaging like over 100 flights on stairs oh my god sure. that's flights so think about a skyscraper and think about running up that wow. eight times. It's a very physically fit company. Yeah. Over there, the Imperial well, Theater. we're all shrinking. We're like, <laughs> we're eating. We're doing our best backstage. So we, do, do the, does the audience drink or not? Do you drink at the show? Yes, you do drink. It is, uh, I'd say, less raucous than what was going on in the tent. Uh, okay. You still, you have to get your drinks from the bar areas. Right. There are two, three, mm, I think three bar areas right. in the theater. Uh, but, you know. You, you can't it's an option it's you an can option. drink at every show it's an option you can it's drink. a dangerous show so yeah <laughs> watch how much you drink okay watch yeah. how much you drink yeah um so i just want to know quickly why did you become an actor i'm just curious mm. like what was that first moment for you where you were like yeah. i'm gonna do this okay um i so i started out very very young playing the piano by ear when i was three and a half i'm gonna give you the quick version wow of um, so things started going in that kind of prodigy piano direction for a long mm -hmm. time. Uh, and then I started playing the violin when I was in fifth grade. And because I had a, a good ear, I started mimicking singers that okay. I would hear. Like who? Uh, Freddie Mercury was one of these people. Okay. Um, you know, the Ella Fitzgerald. You know, I could sing higher when I was younger, of course. <laughs> yeah. So um, I... Grew up in a very Friday Night Lights town, which okay. is, you know, I'm a small town boy. I come right. from a town of 500 people. So you'd go to the game every Friday night, which I was cool with. That was my life. But what I would right. do is I would tape live from Lincoln Center uh, on PBS. Because okay. watching the violinists, like it's at Perlman or Pinkett Zuckerman, those were sort yeah. of the big ones okay. at the time, I could learn from watching their technique um, and how they were sort of shifting right. and vibrato and all of that. Uh, so I would tape that every Friday night, and I'd come home after the game, and I would watch... The so video. you dealt with your town, and then you had some culture on your DVR when you got right, home. Exactly. Right, exactly. Okay. So I one night uh, came home in this press play, and what started playing was this production of Into the Woods that the American Playhouse series had taped for PBS of the original cast. Of yeah, it. hello. I've seen it like 848 right. times. I yeah, I'm right there with yeah. you. And I remember thinking, what is this? This is really weird and really effed up and yeah. very dark yeah. and mysterious. Yeah. Uh, and that was the moment where I sort of went, I want to know what this is. And I went out and I got that album. And that sort of led me into other albums. Into the Woods. Yeah. That was Did you watch the same Defected George one. one, too? Yes. You got to that? Yeah, okay, I'm glad. totally. That's totally. A good, that's a good one, too. All right, let's do some <laughs> quick rapid fire questions before I let you go. Okay. Uh, uh, somebody said, if you could live in any era, wh which one would you want to live in? Peyton mm. wants to know. Ah, God, this question time machine. is so There's a time hard. machine right outside the door. Yeah. I mean, there, there are different reasons I would go back to different places. You probably would want to leave right now, though, because you're about to open on Broadway. Uh, this, is, this is very true. <laughs> I would go back to the 60s if somehow we could like get over the kind of cultural problems that are, were going on. <laughs> okay. But I, I appreciate that, that era and the sort of romanticism that existed, especially yeah. in like old Hollywood. Okay, yeah. Uh, if you could be any other character, I'm going to say in the show, if you could play any other character in Natasha Pierre, who would you want to play? Mm. <laughs> Princess Mary. See? <laughs> um. Mary is plain. <laughs> <laughs> did you like Cambridge? Did you like doing the show in Cambridge? Yeah. You did it ART. Huge learning experience, yeah. What, what was the venue you did it in? It was like... We did it in their big theater, the Loeb Center. Oh, you did it in there? Okay. Yeah. But that was the biggest upgrade. So going from the tent was 199, we went up to right. almost 600. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, how, oh, Jenny says, with all the attention for the great comet, how do you keep humble? 
<laughs> oh, by God. not being able to talk and yes. running a hundred flights yes. a night, and it's I mean it's hard work. And I have Robert. awesome people in my life that definitely keep keep me you in humble. My place. Yeah, they're like all right, enough. Yeah, and well, and I've been you know I I've worked very hard and I've been doing this for a while to know that there is uh, no sort of moment that you get to stop doing that. Hmm. To to maintain a career, you have to keep working. You have to keep pushing right. yourself. And right. there's no moment, in my opinion, when you are good enough mm. and I'm not saying that's healthy because I'm a bit of a perfectionist right. and I can go too far in that direction but my mind never wants to stop learning or never wants to stop growing so cool yeah well thank you so much for coming in in the midst of your sure. rehearsal slash preview period uh everyone needs to see this show I mean, this is definitely a must-see show must see. this is like must-see like on so many levels yeah you may never see anything like this again L- literally yeah <laughs> natasha sure. pierre and the great comet of 1812 is at the imperial theater where les mis was but it looks nothing like it did mm-hmm. when you saw les mis <laughs> uh and uh lucas Steele here is awesome thank you so much for coming in and everyone uh check out live at five tomorrow we have a more exciting guest uh, what are you doing for Halloween? Anything? Or are you doing on, you keep it on the uh, stage? I, d- I did it yesterday. You did yeah. it? Were check you, out my Twitter. You'll are you in see, costume? You'll oh, see Twitter. Check out this yeah. Twitter. Okay, <laughs> check it out. Bye, guys. <laughs>